स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे कौरवाणी प्रचारिण निर्विशेष शून्य बारी पश्चात देशतारिण वंशकौपातरुभ्यश्च कृपा सिंधु पतितनाम भवानेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदे गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so to speak about the origin of the rathi atra and the worship of lord jagannath we hear from our acharyas about how long ago there was a great king in the land of what is today arissa Previ previously it was called utkal and the, there was a great king maharaj indra jumna indra jumna was the king and he desired to worship the lord of the universe he was a great devotee but he didn't know what is the form of the lord of the universe so he arranged a uh, for one of his brahmanas to go around and find out what is the form of the lord of the universe so this brahmana happened to meet this one young girl whose father was the chief of the sabaras sabaras means the people who they raise pigs and they sell pigs so this young woman was the daughter of the king of the sabaras I means they're not very high class people because they're dealing with pigs but anyway there are some brahmanas there also and this girl was telling how her father would come home every night and he would smell of sandalwood and very fragrant flowers and he would bring the prasadam of the lord so it happened that this brahmana vidyapati who was the servant of indra jumna he met this young girl and he heard about her father so he became curious to go with her father to see who he was worshiping so the girl's father agreed to take vidyapati there but he said I, i'll have to blindfold you because i don't want you to know so he agreed but he tricked he tricked the the king of the sabaras he kicked he tricked him because he took some seeds with him and as he walked along the road he dropped the seeds and he knew that these seeds are going to sprout and after some time there will be flowers where he's dropped the seeds so if he wants to know his path he just has to find the seeds where the seeds have been dropped and you will see there's plants there he can understand this was the road so he went with the girl's father and they went there and they worshiped a deity called nila madhava and nila madhava was we don't know exactly what form nila madhava was but anyway this was a form of the lord so vidyapati was very excited and after seeing nila madhava he went back and he told maharaj indra jumna and maharaj indra jumna came there and he came there and he wanted to see nila madhava but when he got there the deity was gone and the deity said he didn't want to be worshiped in that form any more he was going to reveal another form in which he should be worshiped 
So it happened that there was a omen that three logs of wood were going to be washed ashore on the beach at Puri. And from these three logs of wood, they would be able to carve the form of the Lord of the universe. So when the three logs of wood were washed ashore, then they, they had to search around to find out who could carve these forms of the Lord of the universe. And it turned out there was one carpenter who had leprosy. Now this carpenter was actually Vishwakarma, means he's a, he's an architect or he's a sculpture of the demigods. And he came in this form to carve the form of the Lord of the universe. So the three logs of wood were taken and put in a room in the palace and Vishwakarma went there and he said, I'm going to carve, but if you should not disturb me. He said, if anybody disturbs me, then I have to stop work and I'm leaving and I won't finish. I'll leave everything. So you should not disturb me. You have to give me time to do my work. So Maharaj Indra Yumna had the logs of wood put there in the room and Vishwakarma went in and closed the door and then they could hear the work. They could hear the chipping, the chipping, the hammering and chipping, chiseling as he was carving the forms. So this went on for several days and after more than a week, after that there was no more sound. So then Maharaj Indra became very worried that why is there no sound? And Maharaj Indra thought he must have finished. So Maharaj Indra went and he opened the door and he went in and Vishwakarma said, oh, he said, now you have disturbed me. He said, now I'm going. And Vishwakarma disappeared. And so then Indra Jumna saw the forms of the Lord and he saw that they were not complete. He saw that they had no arms and no legs. So Maharaj Indra Jumna felt very bad. He thought, oh, I'm very offensive. I've done a terrible thing. He was carving the form of the Lord and I, I didn't give him a chance to complete his carving. So he felt very guilty. But then a voice from the heavens, a voice from above spoke and told Maharaj Indra Jumna that no, this is a very special form, that this is a very special form of the Lord and I want to be worshipped in this form. This uh, form with no arms and no legs and the eyes also very wide, the eyes all dilated. This is a very special form which shows the Lord when he is in ecstasy. So it's described that 5,000 years ago Lord Krishna was residing in Dwarka and he was residing there with his many, many queens and he had his mother and father, Vasudev and Devaki and his family and Mother Rohini was there, mother of Balaram. And so there were many people. But when Lord Krishna would sleep at night, the people would hear Lord Krishna talk in his sleep and he would mention names like Sridam, Rishabha, Sudama, Radha, Lalita, Vishaka. He would mention these different names of different people from his Vrindavan Leela. So the people in Dwarka were shocked. They thought, who are these people? Who, who are these people? Who are these names? Who is this Radha? And who is this uh, uh, Sridham and Subal and Madhu Mangal, who are these people? We never heard these names before. We don't know who they are. So they thought about it and they didn't like to ask Lord Krishna. They thought it's not proper to ask Krishna. But they asked, they asked uh, around and then, then they remembered that Mother Rohini 
She was the only one who was in Vrindavan during the time of Lord Krishna. When Lord Krishna was living there in Vrindavan as a cowherd boy, Rohini was there and she was the mother of Balarama. She was also a wife of Vasudeva. Deva, Vasudeva had several wives. Devaki was one and Rohini was another one. But he had several wives. And so Ro, Rohini had been sent to the home of Nanda Maharaj in Goku because they were worried about her safety. Vasudeva and Devaki had already been put in the prison by Kamsa and Kamsa was threatening to kill them. So they were very worried. So they put, they told Mother Rohini, better you go to Nanda Maharaj's home and stay there. Because if Kamsa knows you're also one of the wives of Vasudev, he'll put you also in the prison. So the, at this time Rohini, she, 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 was, she had just delivered her son, Balaram. So she had a baby boy. And then Kamsa had sent his demon friends around to kill all the children in Vrindavan. Go around and kill all the babies and all the children. Go and kill them all. We don't want any of them. Just kill them. Let them taste the poison. Then they'll die immediately. So, Vas Rohini was there in Vrindavan, staying in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. And because she was there, she saw, first of all, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, they gave birth to Lord Krishna, and then they, they, the, the child grew up. When Krishna grew up, he was playing with Rohini's son, Balaram, and so Krishna and Balaram, they were friends, childhood friends. They grew up together and they were both sons of Vasudev. So Krishna and Balaram, they performed their childhood pastimes in the home of Nanda Maharaj. It said Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, they're always Krishna's mother and father. Vasudeva and Devaki are not always, sometimes, very rarely. They get, a, they get an opportunity to be Krishna's mother and father. Not very common. But Vasudeva, but Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, they are always Krishna's mother and father. And Rohini, she had seen all the pastimes. She would seen everything which took place. So they asked Rohini that you have to speak. You have to tell us about this. Who are these people in Vrindavan? So Rohini began to speak, but she said, better nobody should come in. Keep the doors closed. Don't let Krishna come, because if Krishna comes and he hears everything, it will be very painful for him, because they're very dear friends of Krishna, and Krishna's left them. So better he doesn't hear. I don't want to give pain to his heart. So they said, no problem, don't worry about anything. We'll have Subhadra guard the door. So they had Subhadra supposed to guard the door. But when Rohini began to speak about Krishna's pastimes, then everybody was so surprised. And they were listening. And Subhadra was also listening. And while she was listening, she was listening so carefully, she didn't notice Krishna came in and Balarama also came in. And they both stood on either side of Subhadra. They stood at the back of the hall. Everyone was sitting in the front listening to Rohini. And she, and, and Rohini, Rohini was speaking. And as she was speaking more and more, then Subhadra, and Balarama and Krishna, their eyes became bigger and bigger. You know, just like you hear something very special, you think, oh, 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 really? You know, and your eyes get bigger and bigger, right? I hope your eyes are not closed just now. I hope your eyes are open. If you close your eyes, you go to sleep. 
So don't go to sleep. Try to hear. So they opened, their, their eyes were opening very wide. And, but not only were their eyes opening, their arms and legs were shrinking into their body. Not only Krishna, but Balarama and Subhadra also. Their arms and their legs shrank into their body. So, this is the very special form of Lord Jagannath, with, along with his brother and sister, Balaram and Subhadra. And you can see their arms and legs, they're shrunk into the body, and the eyes are open very big. Because this is a special form where they're relishing ecstasy. They're hearing about their pastimes in Vrindavan. And it's ecstasy to them to hear about their loving dealings with all the people of Vrindavan. It's very, very pleasing. And this causes their arms and legs to shrink into their bodies and their eyeballs to be dilated, to become so big. So this is how Lord Krishna took the form of Jagannath. the Lord of the universe. Then Lord Balarama. Lord Balarama, he is the original form of the spiritual master. He's the Adi Guru. And Subhadra, she is the Shakti or the energy of the Lord. So you have these three forms. You have Krishna or Jagannath. You have Balarama, the Adi Guru. And you have Subhadra, the potency or the Shakti of the Lord. So these three deities are worshipped in this way. And uh, the Rathi Atra festival is performed every year. Well, of course, before the Rathi Atra festival, there's first of all what's called the Snan Yatra. Snan Yatra means the bathing festival. Snan Yatra is the bathing festival and it's actually also considered to be the appearance day, the day in which Lord Jagannath appeared as he did to Maharaj Indra Jumna after they were carved by Vishwakarma. So that was the, the birthday of Lord Jagannath. And they have the, on that particular day, which is the Pur Purnima full moon day, uh, or is it the new moon day? And maybe it's the new moon day. Uh, on that particular day, they do the bathing ceremony of the three deities. And then after they bathe the deities, then the deities go into reclusion into some kind of isolation and we don't see them for two weeks. For about two weeks they're not visible to anybody. They don't meet anybody. Sometimes it's said that they catch, they caught, they got some sickness, they got a cold. And the people who are taking care of the deities, they give special, they give special medicines and fruit juices and so on to the deities. So it's very special to worship the deity at this time for two weeks they're not meeting anybody and they're only taking special foods. And these Sabara people are the ones who are taking care of the deities. They're the ones who take care of the deity. Then after two weeks, then they come out. And then at that time, when the day when they come out, there's a Rati Atra festival. Because Krishna spent some two weeks at home with his, uh, with the goddess of fortune, you could say, in Dwarka. He was there in Dwarka along with his family. But then he thinks, I want to go to Vrindavan. I want to go home and meet my, old, my own family, my old family, my old friends. So this is the Rathi Atra festival. It's a festival of bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. So it's very special festival 
We're bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. The first Rathiatra took place in Kurukshetra. Lord Krishna had come from Dwarka along with his queens. He had come there along with his queens and along with all of his family members because there was a solar eclipse. So they wanted to observe the special solar eclipse. They did sacrifices and they give charity. And so they had many people there, all the great sages came and the Pandavas came and Krishna had the gopis come. Krishna had the gopis come from Vrindavan. He wrote a letter to them and told them, I'm going to go to Kurukshetra. And he knew Kurukshetra is not very far away from Vrindavan. So he asked the gopis, come and meet me there because we haven't seen each other for a long time. And he told them, last time we had the, the wrestling match in Mathura, at that time the cowherd boys went there. So this time the cowherd boys can stay back and take care of the cows and let the gopis come to Kurukshetra. So the gopis came and they met with Krishna after a long time. But when they met Krishna at Kurukshetra, it was not the same. And there were some, they just didn't feel the same. They saw Krishna, Krishna wasn't the same. Because Krishna, previously they not known Krishna in Vrindavan, and he was a cowherd boy. And he, he had a peacock feather in his hair, and he played the flute, and he was dressed like a cowherd boy. But now he's come from Dwarka and he's in his royal dress and he has a crown, he doesn't have a flute, he doesn't have peacock feather, he doesn't, he's not covered in all the different coloured stones which he was when he was in Vrindavan. So they, they were not so, they didn't like this Krishna, they thought this Krishna, this is not the one who we really know. But they thought, we want to take Krishna back to Vrindavan because he said this Kurukshetra, this Kurukshetra place is not like Vrindavan. That in this Kurukshetra there were so many military and elephants and chariots and soldiers and everything. But in Vrindavan, in Vrindavan there's the cows and there are the peacocks and the parrots and there are the Yamuna River and Govardhan Hill and the forests of Vrindavan. So it's a very different mood from Kurukshetra. So the gopis wanted to bring Krishna from Kurukshetra to bring him to Vrindavan. And this is the festival of Rathiatra, bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. So every year we perform this festival. Of course, it's a little different. We usually just bring the deities on the chariot and take them around the block or around the, the town and then bring the deities back to the temple. But in Jagannath Puri, they will take the deities, they'll bring the deities out of the main temple and they will take them to a place called Gundicha, which is a few kilometers down the road from the main temple. And the deity will go there and stay there for, for eight days. And after eight days, he will come back to the main temple. So they have a Rathiatra to go, and then they have another Rathiatra to come back. They call it the return Rathiatra. So this is what happens with Rathiatra. You're going, you're visiting uh, these places, and you want to bring Krishna to Vrindavan. It's the mood of bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. So Lord Chaitanya, he would take part in the Rathiatra every year. The day before the Rathiatra, they would clean the temple and they have a, ser they have a f special program called the C cleaning of the Gundicha temple. Gundicha Marjana, we call it. Marjana means the cleaning of the Gundicha. And Gundicha is the temple and it also refers to the heart. So before we have the festival of Rathiatra, we have to clean the Gundicha temple to make it very nice for the deities to come and sit there. 
In the same way, we want to take part in Rath Yatra, we have to clean the heart so that the De Lord Jagannath can sit in our heart. And to clean the heart, we have to get rid of all the material desires and all the offenses which are there in our heart. Or we would call them anarthas, or all the dirty things which we don't want. So we try to get We try to encourage the devotees to clean their hearts very nicely so that they can take part in the Rathi Atra and Lord Jagannath can sit in their heart. You see, this is the, this is the purpose of Rathi Atra, bringing Krishna to Vrindavan, right? You want to go to Vrindavan, you have to clean the heart. You, you don't go to Vrindavan just by buying a ticket. You have to clean the heart. That's very important. And how to clean the heart? By engaging in devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting. Just like during the Rathiatra festival, when you were pulling the chariots, you were not only just pulling the chariot, but you were also chanting. There was a lot of kirtan, the chanting of the holy name was going on. So similarly, when Rathiatra takes place, thousands of people will come and they will pull the chariots and they will also chant the holy name of the Lord. So this is the festival of Rathiatra. Now Prabhupada liked very much to take part in Rathiatra. When Prabhupada was a young child, only a few years old, at that time he was observing Rathi Atra. His parents arranged for him to get a chariot and somehow they got some deity and they had a Rathi Atra festival for children and they invited all the people in the neighborhood to come and they had prasadam distribution. And they, of course they would do some kirtan, sang kirtan. The chanting of the holy name is performed all the time in every activity. When they were cleaning Gundicha Marjanam, the Lord Chaitanya and all his devotees, they were all chanting the holy name. They were chanting Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare. They were chanting the holy names of the Lord loudly. The, holy na the chanting of the holy name has to go on in every activity. So Prabhupada as a young boy, he was celebrating Rathiatra. And then when he grew up, as he grew up, he would also he'd be thinking about going to Jagannath Puri, or maybe he would go think about going to Vrindavan, and he would consult the times of the trains, and he would find out what time the train was and how much the train was. But he was only a young student, he had no money, he couldn't go. So he would just only think about it. But then, when he finished his college, when he finally completed his college studies, then at that time he took an opportunity to go and visit Jagannath Puri. And he went on his own for the very first time. He went there to Jagannath Puri from Calcutta. He took, took the train there and he stayed there several days and he enjoyed going to see the deities. And he enjoyed also taking the prasadam from the deities. His father had given him an introduction to some man who was a friend of his. But when Prabhupada went to see him, the man was offering him food and the food had meat in it. So Prabhupada told the man, I cannot take this, I'm a vegetarian. Our family, we don't eat meat. Oh, so the man was a little surprised. He said, oh, really? He said, I thought meat was good. I thought this was the best I was offering you. Anyway, Prabhupada didn't take meat. And he arranged for himself to get prasadam from the temple in Jagannath Puri. So Prabhupada was very happy to go and see Jagannath, although there was no Rathiatra festival at that time. Then later on, he went to America. 
And the first tempo, of course, he was in, he was at, first of all, he went to New York and he began a small center there with people there. And then it happened that some of the people, one couple from New York, went to San Francisco. And when they went to San Francisco, they got some of their friends and they made a center in San Francisco and then they contacted Prabhupada and asked him to come there. So Prabhupada went there. So San Francisco was the second center. So while they were in San Francisco, at that time one of the lady devotees went to the Indian import stores and she purchased a little doll. And when she brought it home and showed it to Prabhupada, Prabhupada offered his obeisances to it and said, Oh, he said, this is a form of Jagannath. And Srila Prabhupada told her, this is very special. He said, the, the, the Lord of the universe has appeared to us. And he told her, go back to the store and see if they have any other dolls there. So she went back and she found there were two other dolls and she brought them back. And Prabhupada told her, yes, this is Krishna's brother, Balaram, and this is his sister, Subhadra. So then Prabhupada told the devotees, he said, this is very auspicious that Lord Krishna has appeared for our devotees here. So he told the devotees that we should make some deities. And one of the devotees knew how to carve and be, he was a sculptor. So he offered to carve big sized deities of Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra. And he, car he got big blocks of wood and he carved the deities. And then they began worship. And there was no paraphernalia. There were no conch shells. There was no ghee lamps or anything. So what did they do? They simply offered a candle. They had one big candle. And they would light one big candle every night. And the devotees would take turn to come and wave the candle in front of the deity. So this was how they began the worship of Lord Jagannath in San Francisco. Later on, Prabhupada gave the name New Jagannath Puri to the temple in San Francisco because they were the first ones to worship Jagannath. So Prabhupada then told them also about Rathiatra. He said, you can organize a Rathiatra festival. And Prabhupada told them how to do it, that you get a truck and on the back of the truck you can build like a dome and you put the deities there. And you pull, the, and then you, you 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 can drive the truck, or you can pull the truck, and you take the deities around. So they did they did this, and the, the first Rathiatra was held in a big park there in San Francisco called the Golden Gate Park. And so they had a big festival there, and Prabhupada came there, and Prabhupada gave lecture, and they had a lot of prasadam. They got a lot of prasadam. They would go to the different wholesalers and they would request the wholesalers to donate and some people would give a lot of bananas and some people would give a lot of tomatoes and different people would donate different things and in this way the devotees cooked very big opulent prasadam and many many people all came to take prasadam and to chant the holy name and to hear about the the glories of the lord of the universe so the Lord of the Universe appears in this form. He's known as Jagannath. Now, in, in the past, a long time ago, the, the people, they didn't know who is this. They thought he was a Buddha or something. Because Buddhism was so widespread in India, nobody actually knew about Jagannath and Balaram and Subhadra. So when they saw the deities, they thought, this is a Buddha. And they thought this is some other forms of Buddha. But it wasn't until people like Shankaracharya came. Shankaracharya, of course, he was a Mayavadi, but he also wrote a beautiful poem called Jagannath Astikam, meaning eight verses glorifying Lord Jagannath. And at the end of each line of the eight verses, he is written, Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagani Bhava to me. Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagani Bhava to me. 
O Lord of the universe, Lord Jagannath, kindly be visible unto me. So it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, song, uh, Shankaracharya, that means like 1200 years ago, he wrote this poem, glorifying Lord Jagannath. And then Ramanuja also came there to Jagannath Puri. And Ramanuja is from South India, and he's a very orthodox Brahman and like that. And he came there and he saw the worship at Jagannath Puri, and he was not very satisfied because he thought the people in Jagannath Puri, they don't worship according to the Vedas. So he went to see the king of Puri, and he was, because he was very famous, Ramanuja, very respected everywhere, everyone knew his name. So he went to see the king, and so he told the king, I have to meet all the people worshipping the deity, I have to tell them how to do it, they're not doing it properly. So the king arranged a meeting, he said, you come back tomorrow, I'll have all the priests here. And so Ramanuja went back that night and took rest. But during the night, Ramanuja was picked up and taken out and transported out of Jagannath Puri and put in a place called Kurmakshetra. And the reason was Lord Jagannath didn't want Ramanuja changing anything. Ramanuja was thinking to change everything because he saw that, that many of the priests who are worshipping the deities, they eat fish, they're not very pure, and he saw how they do the things, they don't do them very nicely, they're not according to Shastra. But Lord Jagannath liked the devotion and he didn't want anything changed. So during the night Ramanuja was mystically transported without even his knowledge. And he woke up the next morning and he was in another town, hundreds of miles away, a place called Kurma, uh, Kurmakshetra, where there's a deity of Lord Kurma. So Ramanuja stayed there. And so that pastime shows that Lord Jagannath didn't want anybody changing his deity worship. And then later on, after Ramanuja Charya, then Lord Chaitanya came there. And Lord Chaitanya stayed for 18 years in Jagannath Puri. 18 years. He took sannyas at the age of 24. And then initially he came to Jagannath Puri, stayed for just a few months. And then he left, to went, went down to South India and all around India, and then came back to India. And came back to Jagannath Puri. And he stayed for 18, after six years going around India, he came back and stayed for 18 years in Jagannath Puri. And every year he would take part in the Rathiyatra festival. And he would experience great ecstasy. Because Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, but he's in the mood of Radharani. Right? We say Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a combined form of Radha and Krishna, but he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to experience the emotion or the bhava of Radharani. And he was enjoying this bhava with Lord Jagannath. Lord Jagannath, of course, is Lord Krishna. And Srimati Radharani, well, Lord Chaitanya, he is Krishna, but he's come in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So like this, there was a loving exchange between Lord Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now both Lord Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are the supreme truth. They are the form of the Lord of the universe. But they're in different moods. And Lord Jagannath is the Lord of the universe. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's coming in the mood of Srimati Radharani, the devotee. So there was a loving exchange between Lord Jagannath and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sometimes Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go behind the chariot. And when he would go behind the chariot, then the chariot would stop. And nobody could push it. It, it wouldn't move. Because the chariot's controlled by Lord Jagannath. So, in this way they have very many, there's many wonderful pastimes take place in the, path, in the pulling of the Rathiyatra chariot. Maybe we'll stop here. We'll just ask if you want to have any questions. 
I've been talking for a while. Do you want to have some questions? Anything you want to ask? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. The question in the chat box. Uh, did the gopis succeed in bringing Lord Jagannath to Vrindavan? From Sri Devi Gauranghi Devi Jati. Yes. Did the gopis succeed in bringing Lord Krishna to Vrindavan? Yes, definitely. But Lord Krishna, when he goes to Vrindavan, he hides himself in the hearts of the gopis. So he comes in his apricot form in Vrindavan. Actually, Lord Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. He hides himself in the hearts of the gopis. So this was just a leela, just a pastime we were telling. It's told like this in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The, the gopis, they feel the separation from Krishna. And when they see Krishna at Kurukshetra, they desire to bring him to Vrindavan. But actually Krishna never leaves Vrindavan because he's, he's eternally in the hearts of the gopis. So it's a very mystical, very esoteric pastime. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question. Uh, did the, the Gopis build the chariot and everything and they choose this Jagannath form to bring them to Vrindavan or it is just their thought, Guru Maharaj? Did, did they really make chariot, the Gopis, did they make the chariot like Rathayatra? Oh, did they make a chariot like Rathayatra? <laughs> Well, they, have, they had chariots there. So many chariots were there in Kurukshetra. Did they make a big chariot like at Rathiyatra? No, I don't think they would make a big chariot like the one at Rathiyatra, but you know, these Rathiyatra chariots, which they make every year in Jagannath Puri, they're very special. You know, they make a new chariot every year and they build the chariots with very special wood, special trees. And there's no nails. They join the whole, the whole chariots put together without any nails. Somehow or other, just by the craftsmanship of the carpenters, they're able to connect the whole thing and make it all work, put it all together. And there are no brakes on the chariot, of course. And it's just pulled, you know, just pulled. So sometimes it will go very fast and other times it will stop and it won't go at all because it's under the control of Lord Jagannath. Did the gopis select this form, Guru Maharaj? That's the, uh, the form of, uh, they also saw this form? Jagannath? Yeah, I was thinking why he selected this form for the Sayatra Jagannath. Well, I told you, that that was the form when they were hearing about the pastimes in Vrindavan, that they were hearing and hearing about the pastimes in Vrindavan, and as they were hearing, their eyes were becoming bigger and bigger, and as they were hearing, their arms and legs were shrinking into their body. So this is a special form of the Lord when he is in ecstasy, hearing about pastimes of the devotees in Vrindavan. It's a very, and this was why Maharaj Indra Jumna was told that actually, that this, I want, the Lord told him, I want to be worshipped in this form. Because this is a, a form in which I'm in ecstasy hearing about the pastimes of Vrindavan. So it's the special significance of these forms of Jagannath, Balaram and Subhadra. This is the ecstasy of the Lord. The devotees feel ecstasy and Lord Jagannath, he also feels ecstasy. And his ecstasy is in hearing about the, the devotees, hearing about Vrindavan, causes him to become ecstatic. Remember Lord Jagannath, Lord Krishna, he come from Dwarka. 
right? So Krishna of Dwarka was hearing about Vrindavan. And when he was hearing about Vrindavan, it just it transformed his physical appearance. Not only him, but also Subhadra and Balaram. They all became affected. They all became, became overwhelmed in love for the, with the devotees of Vrindavan. Prabhu, do you have a question? Yes, yes. I have a question for Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, the question is, uh, the act of Ratha Yatra started 5,000 years ago uh, in Kurukshetra, and then uh, now we see this happening in um, Jarannath Puri. Is there, was there a time when it was not, um, like, uh, it was not celebrated, the Ratha Yatra? Was there a gap in between, or? Was there no gap? It just uh, continued in Jagannath Puri. Well, we know that Maharaj Indra Jumna, he wanted to worship the Lord of the Universe. So he, when he was he, he searching out the form of the Lord, he had to wait for the these logs of wood to come, and then he had to get the Vishwakarma to come and carve the. So that took some time to get the form, to get these forms carved, to get the logs of wood, and to do, uh, and we're not sure exactly how long ago that was, but several thousand years ago. So Maharaj Indra Jumna, he was a great devotee, and he wanted to worship the Lord, but he had to wait some time. It took some time to get. The, 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 for the Lord to appear, for the Lord to be manifest. And then after that, the Rathyatra festival, well, how did that come about? <laughs> we don't, I don't know yeah. all the history myself, but we know it's been going on for a very long time. So I told you like Shankaracharya 1200 years ago, yeah. He wrote Jagannath Astikam. So it was going on then, before Shankaracharya. But Buddhism was rampant for a long time. So during the times of the Buddhism, because people were thinking that this ja the Jagannath, they thought he's Buddha. People were mistaken. They didn't know who he was. They thought this Jagannath, this is a Buddha. So at that time, there may not have been Rathiyatras going on. And there was even, there was one demon came, he came with an army and he was conquering and they came there to Jagannath Puri and they conquered the temple and they stole the deities. And they tried to, they tried to burn the deities. But somehow the, de the deities were saved. So there's been a long history you know, so many wars and struggles and different philosophies. You had the Buddhism very rampant for a long time in India. And then this demon king came, destroying temples. You had also that. You had the, the Muslims coming also, destroying temples and deities. So certainly for some time there was no Rathiyatras. Thank you very much. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dwar Pitya Maharaj, uh, my humble wishes all glories to Guru Maharaj. My, my question, can you hear Guru Maharaj? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in worshipping Lord Krishna, do we have to have different standards in according to its different forms because in Puri, in Jagannath Puri, the process and the performance, the practice is different than what we are performing in this corner. How do we say that? Yes, we have our standards. We have our own standards for ISKCON, right? Our standards are according to the Vedas, according to the given by Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya said followers, the Goswamis, 
they have given an, a lot of detailed information on the standards, how to worship and what should be the standards. So we follow Lord Chaitanya and his followers, the Goswamis. They have written about it, how to worship the deities, what should be done. Yes, we know that the people who are worshipping the deities and the temples, you know, these things vary. Sometimes they vary over, the, over time and sometimes just it, sometimes just due to de a deterioration in the standards, we don't know. But certainly, we don't care what their standards are. We have our own standards. We follow our own standards. And Prabhupada taught us to worship Jagannath. Prabhupada liked to worship of Jagannath, and he approved how the devotees worship Jagannath. So we don't have any conflict, you know, the people in Jagannath Puri, they have their own style. They're not open to everybody, they, they keep the temple closed only for Hindus, you know, so there's, there's is a Hindu worship. It's not Vedic, not exactly Vedic, they don't follow any Shastra or Vedic Shastra, they have their own traditions. And we follow the Pancharatriki, Narada Pancharatriki. We follow these Shastras. So we worship the deities according to the instructions of Narada Muni. So they're different. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, Ramananda Acharya is trying to uh, introduce some kind of uh, improvement in worshipping the Lord. But he was taken out completely from the Jagannath Puri. Okay. Was that an offense to the Lord? Or how do we take it? Well, we take it. Lord Jagannath wanted Ramanuja to do his work in another place. That Ramanuja was in, and he was taken to Sri Rangam, and so he was in Sri. Uh, not Sri Rangam Ra, Kurmakshetra, Kurmakshetra, and he came there and the, there was a, there's a deity there of Lord Kurma, and so Ramanujacharya developed the temple there, and they made a nice temple, and he established the worship there. So the Lord wanted him to work there, rather than interfering with what was going on in Jagannath Puri. Sometimes the Lord, you know, it's the Lord's own desire. Sometimes just leave everything as it is, don't change anything. Just like I was saying, the Subaras, the Saberas, Sabaras, the pig, they raise pigs and sell pigs. And these people are called the Dietas, means they get the mercy of the Lord. Because the deity was there proper, they were the ones who were taking care of the deity originally. So they're given that nice service to take care of the deity and they make the morning offering for the deity. So they're given a lot of respect because of their relationship with the deities. They may be raising pigs, but Lord Jagannath doesn't care. He sees that they're devoted to him. They worship him. So it's a special situation. Anyway, it's not that we have to worship pigs. We don't have to worship pigs. We don't have to follow that example. We have our own standards. Okay. So the most important significance in worshiping the Lord is the consciousness compared to the protocol, right? Yeah, consciousness, of course, is very important. Protocol is also there, as its proper time and place. You have to consider the situation. You can't, you can't just go in and change something which has already been set up for a thousand years. 
you know, something has been going on for a long time, you cannot change it. So the tradition is there, it's already set up, you have to keep the tradition. Guru Maharaj, we have three more questions from Yuna, Shilpa and Nitya. Is that okay, Guru Maharaj? Well. Uh, yeah, Yuna Mataji, Shilpa Mataji and Nitya, you can ask. What's, go ahead. what's Nitya's question? Yuna Mataji? Nitya. Nitya. Actually, I didn't type any question now, actually. What's but your question? Your hand? Oh, okay. I think it's my mistake, actually. I'm, I'm got the, my brother, I don't have... I understood those questions. Okay. Shilpa Mataji has a raised hand raised. Yeah. Shilpa Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shilpa Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, was there a specific significance why Lord Jaitanya chose to live in Jagannath Puri other than Mat uh, Sachi Mata requesting him? Was there any other reason? Yes, of course, uh, Jagannath Puri is it's considered to be, it's, it's non-different from Vrindavan and Dwarka. It's, it's a special place where the Lord feels separation from his devotees. So Lord Chaitanya liked to, wanted to live there. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also departed from the world there in Jagannath Puri. He retired there in Jagannath Puri. It's a, it's considered that 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 that, uh, Kurm, that uh, Jagannath Puri is on this. It's, it's just the same. There's no difference between Dwarka or Vrindavan. These places. So when Lord Chaitanya was there, he would see the sea. He would think it's a Yamuna, and when he saw the hills, the mountain, there's a small mountain behind the temple, he thought that's a Govardhan. And the gardens there around the temple, they're just like the gardens in Vrindavan. So he, he saw that this Jagannath Puri is just like Vrindavan to him. Especially when he would go to Gundicha, Gundicha is Vrindavan, and the big temple was like Dwarka. So, within Jagannath Puri, just like it, you have the Rathayatra, you bring the deity out of the main temple, the main temple is considered to be like Dwarka, and you're bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. Vrindavan is the Gundicha temple, which is just two kilometers down the road. So, these places are both there, within the holy place of Jagannath Puri. Thank you, Guru Manaj. Hmm. Yes, uh, thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble businesses. Uh, can you tell about uh, Hera Panchami when Lakshmi Devi goes to the Gundicha temple? Well, you can read that for yourself in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's all described there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The goddess of fortune is coming to the Gundicha temple to find out where her husband is and why he's been so long. Because when Krishna left, 
he was supposed to leave for just one day, but he spent several days, he hadn't come back. So the goddess of fortune was angry. Where's my husband? Why he hasn't come back? So she came to look for him and she came with all of her associates. And she came dressed in opulence. So often when a woman is angry, they don't dress with a lot of jewelry and everything and the, you know, they don't take care. But the goddess of fortune was just the opposite. When the gopis or when Satyabhama would get angry, they would take off all their jewelry and they would, you know, they would just and put on the old dress and everything. But the goddess of fortune, she was angry and she came all in with a lot of jewelry and a fancy dress on. So her anger was of a different nature. So this is Harapanchami, this is the, the special anger of the goddess of fortune that she came there to Kundicha and they arrested the servants of Lord Jagannath and they had them bow down to the goddess of fortune and they promised that very soon they're coming back. So that's all. It's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in the Majalila chapter 14, Vrindavan pastimes. Okay, so now we have to chant. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. Shananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar 